Hello everybody, and welcome. For those of you who are new, you are watching Quantum ASMR. And for those of you who aren't new, welcome back. So today is going to be another math video. Finally, it's been a while and I'm glad to be getting back into it. Um, we're going to go over the mean value theorem of multidimensional calculus. So I'm just going to do like state the theorem and then do the proof for it. Don't mind the dogs in the background. They like to play a lot. Um, let me think. What else can I say? Um, yeah, so it's good to be back and, um, there's going to be another scare video coming up soon. So I, I know I said I'd post them last week, but, um, some stuff came up where I wasn't really able to. So here it is tonight <laughs> or whenever this is. So, um, but yeah, also my sister, my little sister, you've seen her probably in a few of my videos. She has decided to start her own YouTube channel. It's not ASMR. Um, she talks about some mental, um, disorders, uh, or mental health issues that she is currently facing, what she's been diagnosed with, and, um, she's, I think she's, Oh, baby. I think she's very brave to put herself out there and just spread awareness of, um, you know, mental disorders, mental health issues, and, um, as most of you know, not enough is put, not enough of the spotlight is put on those, so it would be really good if you guys could check her out. Um, I'll post the link in my description. Um, go subscribe, watch her videos. They're pretty short, um, but she just goes through um, some of the stuff that she personally um, deals with. And I think that would be, I think it's very good. Um, so go ahead and check it out. But without further ado, let's get into the math video. Let's just get right into it. So what we're looking at is the mean value theorem for multidimensional calculus, or the MVTMC, right? And so the mean value theorem of multidimensional calculus states that if Z is equal to f of x and y, then er, z sub x and z sub y are all continuous in a neighborhood of x and y. then z is differentiable at x and y. So it states that if z is equal to f of x, y, and z with respect to x and z with respect to y are all continuous in a neighborhood of x and y, then z is differentiable at x and y. So let's get into the proof. All right, so first we're gonna let z equal f of x and y and z sub x and z sub y are continuous. 
my handwriting is terrible, but this is really for the sound, so it's fine. Alright, then that means that the change in Z is equal to f of x plus some change in x and y plus some change in y minus f of x y minus f of x plus delta x y plus f of x plus delta x y. So it's really just equal to up to here because if you notice when we add these and subtract we're really adding zero because these are the same thing. So anything plus plus something minus that same something is equal to zero. All right. And at the same time, delta z is equal to f of x plus delta x y minus f of x y plus f of x plus delta x y plus delta y minus f of x plus delta x and y. And if you notice again, all we did here was rearrange where these two guys were. So we put one of them up here and one of them back here. All right, so then we use this theorem. By the mean value theorem, there exists some zeta in y or like between y and y plus delta y such that f with respect to y of x plus delta x zeta so you notice we use those two things times delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x y plus delta y minus f of x plus delta x y and also there exists some we're going to call this mu I think is what it's called in x between or between x and x plus delta x so within the change such that f with respect to x of mu and y times delta x is equal to f of x plus delta x y minus f of x y so consider for like a small change in both x and y f with respect to x of mu and y is equal to f with respect of to x of x y plus and we're going to put little epsilon there and that represents the small change and also f with respect to y of x plus delta x and zeta is equal to f of y or f with respect to y of x and y plus another epsilon so we're going to number these we're going to do epsilon one epsilon two because they're different so, guaranteed by continuity, f of 
as epsilon 1 approaches 0, or epsilon 1 approaches 0 as mu and y approach x and y. So this is true because epsilon represents the little error, right? And so the closer that these two guys are together, the smaller this will be because there will be less error, right? And same thing goes for epsilon 2. You can hear my cat. <laughs> So, epsilon 2 approaches 0 as x plus delta x and zeta approach x and y. So therefore, epsilons 1 and 2 approach 0 as the change in x and the change in y approach zero. So that makes sense, right? Because they're both just meaning the difference in, the difference between. All right, let's go on to the next page. All right, now that we have that, and let's just write up here. Epsilon 1 and 2 approach 0 as delta x and delta y approach 0. Alright, so let's go back. So, the change in z now is equal to f with respect to y of x, y, plus epsilon 1 times the change in y plus f of x with respect to x and y plus epsilon 2. You hear my cat? I have him in my room. He's not happy to be in there. All right, so now we can expand. And so let's rearrange this, okay? <laughs> My cat is not happy. And so if you see here, we can just make this into DZ. I don't know if I said before, I might make a little note of it. DC is basically just that, right? So now we can rearrange this. DC plus epsilon one times delta y plus epsilon two times delta x. 
where epsilons one and two approach zero as delta x and delta y approach zero. Now, you can see here that we have this equation. Delta c is equal to dz plus epsilon one times delta y plus e two or epsilon two times delta x. And this just so happens to be in the definition of differentiability. So it basically the definition of differentiability states that if a function z is equal to f of x, y, or like a function z is equal to f of x, y, and is differentiable if delta c equals dz plus epsilon 1 delta y plus epsilon 2 delta x, where epsilons 1 and 2 approach 0 as delta x and delta y approach 0, as we did before. So that means that z is differentiable. Gotta love cats. At x and y by the definition of differentiability. And we are done. That's all there is to it. I know I skipped over a lot of steps, um, or not steps, but like a lot of explanations, but really I just wanted to hear, I wanted to like get stuff written down. Um, my goodness, my cat's throwing itself. He's fine though, he does this all the time. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, get back into writing and it's been a while since I put out a math video, so. Um, yeah, be kind with me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's basically it. And if I, uh, got anything wrong, just let me know in my email. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So you've reached the end of the video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as I said before, if there are any errors in there, please, um, email me. Um, I prefer, um, if you want to be a little bit nicer to email me, um, but I do read my comments too, so, um, if there's any error, please let me know so I can fix it in my description of this video. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to me, and, um, I hope that you guys at least got some relaxation out of this video, if anything. Um, but without further ado, I hope that you guys have a good night. My kitty. I hope that you guys have a good night, or a good day, or a good morning. Whatever time of day you're watching this, I hope you're doing well. And I will see you all in my next video, which is going to be the scare video, so stay tuned. Anyway, love you guys. Bye.